Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Rob Nelson. I'm Marnie Hughes. And our top story tonight, a massive hacking campaign is underway. And those in the cybersecurity unit of the Department of Homeland Security say the hack poses a grave risk. At this point, it is considered the biggest hack in a decade. And they confirm Russians are behind the attack. Late today, Microsoft confirmed to News Nation that it detected and removed malicious software, but so far they don't believe personal information of customers was compromised. Also today, according to Homeland Security, we now know that spies use techniques other than hacking software by the company SolarWinds. The department warned that it will be difficult to remove the malware inserted. One of the U.S. departments hacked was the Department of Energy. The Energy Department gave us this statement tonight. It reads, in part, when DOE identified vulnerable software, immediate action was taken to mitigate the risk, and all software identified as being vulnerable to this attack was disconnected from the DOE network. Joining us live to tell us what officials are saying about this hack, including how widespread it is, is News Nation correspondent Joe Khalil. Joe. Yeah, Rob, that's really the scary thing about this is that cybersecurity experts are now saying that the scale and scope of this thing is much larger than what we had originally learned. And the reason that that is is because, uh, again, we're presuming that uh, Russian intel services uh, behind this, they were able to hack not only into specific agencies, but the way they did this was to hack into software that many agencies in our top government that deal with classified information and private companies, as you mentioned, including Microsoft, use. And so, again, Again, they're worried about the scale of this thing, and it's also the fact that this went unnoticed for nearly nine months. It's got a lot of people questioning whether our cyber defense is up to par. Cybersecurity experts say new details of a widespread cyber hack of the U.S. government and a number of private American companies are more serious than first thought. So this is a lot of American companies uh, with a lot of workers and a lot of Americans' data that were potentially breached in this. Ben Buchanan is a cybersecurity expert and Georgetown University professor. He says the March hack breached not only the Departments of Homeland Security and Commerce, but also America's energy sector. A nuclear safety agency uh, was one of the potential targets here. Uh, that's not the same as nuclear weapons and strategic command, um, but certainly anything related to nuclear security probably deserves attention. The hack didn't target government agencies directly. Rather, they hacked the software company SolarWinds, which many of the agencies use. By compromising this uh, one piece of software, this foundation, it enabled them to get access to everything that was built on top of that foundation. Buchanan says, much like crime scene investigators, cyber experts look for hallmarks of the perpetrators. And he says those clues point to the Russian intelligence service. This is something that I think the American, that the American people have to take very seriously. Congressman Robert Adderholt says moving forward, Congress should also take cyber defense more seriously than it has in the recent past. We have got to spend a lot of time to make sure that uh, that uh, we get a handle on this as we move forward. Buchanan says the Trump administration's national security team took a tougher posture on cyber than previous administrations. And he calls it concerning that an attack of this magnitude still went unnoticed for months. So now the question becomes, because we had that more aggressive posture and this still happened, do we continue with that strategy or do we try something different? And that's going to be certainly a question that the incoming Biden administration is going to have to answer. And we do have a little bit of insight into how they plan to deal with it. Here's a statement that we got from the presidential transition team. President-elect Biden says here, uh, quote, a good defense isn't enough. We need to disrupt and deter our adversaries from undertaking significant cyber attacks in the first place. We will do that by, among other things, imposing substantial costs on those responsible for such malicious attacks, including in coordination with our allies and our partners. That was just part of a much longer statement, but the Biden administration seeming anyway, uh, at least now, to take on the same track that the Trump administration took, which is to be uh, more aggressive and a little bit more offensive in our cyber defense. In the next couple of days, we're going to see if there's any new information that comes out about this act, because again, guys, we are still learning more about it. Reporting live tonight in Washington, Joe Khalil, News Nation. All right, Joe, appreciate it. And here to talk with us more about the effects of this cybersecurity attack and bring you the facts of what happened here is Jordan Ray Kelly. She is the head of cybersecurity at FTI Consulting. She used to be the director for cyber incident response on the National Security Council of the Trump 
White House. Thank you uh, so much for being here, Ms. Kelly. We appreciate it. Uh, we know these breaches are common these days. We know America remains a uh, favorite target of our adversaries, but it's not every day that you hear federal officials say what happened is a, quote, grave risk to the federal government. That kind of language suggests what happened or what is happening is quite serious. Is this different from what we've seen in the past? It is different. I mean, this is certainly the largest cybersecurity event we've seen in 2020, if not in the last decade. This is an event that really gets to the core of what cybersecurity professionals worry about, and that is the infiltration of an entity that we are actually using for our defenses. The, the SolarWinds appliance that was infiltrated by Russian intelligence is actually something that many large companies and our U.S. government use for network monitoring. So you're talking about something that we've paid money for to keep us safe is actually the way that they got in. So this is something that, that keeps people up at night, and I'm sure that, like many security professionals, people have been up since this news came out on Sunday night when they realized how widespread and how significant the consequences of this event were going to be. What are the biggest questions we still don't know yet? So we really still don't know very much about the impact. We know that while SolarWinds has about 300,000 customers, they scope that down to about 18,000, and we're continuing to see scoping down amongst the number of potential Fortune 500 entities that were impacted, at least 40 known important victims, and the number of U.S. government agencies that have been impacted is going up every day. But we don't know what they got, and we don't know what they saw. You just heard that they've impacted the National Nuclear Security Administration. What did they have access to when they were touching the Pentagon, when they were touching the Department of Energy? This is an intelligence operation, and it's really an intelligence failure for the United States. And this apparently began nine months ago. Why is it just making news this week? I've been asking myself that same question, and you have to remember that we had the election just six weeks ago, and going into that election, we heard a lot about the U.S. when it came to its cybersecurity. We heard that everything was in good shape. People were very aware of what the Russians were doing. So I definitely am wondering, did we take our eye off the ball? Did we miss something? How did this happen, and how did it go undetected for so long? Part of that goes to, as I mentioned, the appliance that they got into was something that many people considered to be secure. So it was a really a trusted insider infiltration, if you will. But I do think we have to wonder if we're going to have to change our position going forward to make sure this type of event never happens again. And when you think about the implications here, a cyber attack could potentially open the door to screwing around with hospitals at a time when we desperately need them, getting close to our government secrets, our nuclear secrets, turning off the power grid in a cold weather part of the country in the dead of winter. What they could do, everything, the world runs on computers these days, the fact that they're inching closer and closer uh, to this is frightening. Uh, and can't, the danger of this can't be overstated, which is why it's making such headlines this week. You're, you're totally right. The one thing, if it's a silver lining, is that, as I said, this is an intelligence operation likely conducted by Russian SVR. And so they don't tend to be disruptive, but all of the risks that you just outlined are there. Russian SVR was one of the groups that got into the DNC several years ago, as you may remember, but there was also another Russian group there that is prone to engage in that type of malfeasance. So these are really worrying times, and I think that we need to really be on high alert. The president has not made any public comment on this just yet. Your former boss, is, do you think there's a reason for that, that he has not spoken publicly about what's happened considering the scope of this? I think there probably is a reason. I think that he probably, there's not much good that we can say right now, right? We can't say that we saw this coming, that we were prepared for it. Uh, I'm not surprised that he's remained reticent on this topic. Cybersecurity is not a topic he's been very vocal on, but I think it's a bipartisan issue, and everyone would agree that we have to do something to fix this, to make them pay the price for these events, and to make sure it never happens again. Jordan Ray Kelly, thank you so much for being with us tonight for your insight. and. Hopefully we don't talk again soon, but I have a feeling <laughs> that we might. But uh, thanks for your, your insight tonight. Thanks for having me.